So First Chronicles chapter 5. So we're, we're kind of going back to the, the uh, sons of Israel. We're going to talk about Joseph and Reuben and a little bit more about Judah on this one as well. So uh, in verse 1, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, uh, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. Now, there, this is interesting. Just a little kind of a side note on verse 1 here. So Reuben is, is the literal firstborn of Israel. So technically, he would get the birthright. This is There's a cool little uh, connection that happens with this. Because if you remember... When Jacob, okay, his son, his dad, Isaac, sends him to his cousins to find a wife to marry. So kind of keep it in the family, if you will. So he goes, he sees Rachel, falls in love with her, works for seven years for Rachel's dad. And then on the wedding night, he is given Rachel's older sister as a wife. And so after, after they find out, he finds out, you know, after he's married, to Rachel's sister, wait, this isn't Rachel. What are you talking about? And the guy's like, well, in our customs, it's not good to have the younger sister married before the older sister. So you got to marry the older sister first. So he had to do seven more years of servitude before he could get Rachel. And in the meantime, he had children. And uh, he had, uh, uh, both of them were, you know, barren for different times. And then they gave him their handmaids and stuff like that. So what's crazy about all of that story is Rachel was Joseph's first love. The one, the woman he wanted to marry first. Her two children is Joseph and Benjamin. Those are the main, those are her kids. So all the, the other 10 children were to these other wives that Jacob had. So what's fascinating is if Joseph and Rachel had been able to marry so, so Rachel was his first wife. Joseph would be the oldest and the firstborn in Israel and get the birthright. But he wasn't. But because of how it worked out, Joseph still gets the birthright. Basically, it's, it's so crazy how that worked out. And it's because Reuben violated the commandments. He did some things that weren't very good. And so he lost that birthright opportunity, basically. So they're basically saying, we're not going to really talk about Reuben a whole lot. Now, ver Verse 2, for Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph. So just realize Judah, if you remember, if you go back in there, Judah, when they treated Joseph poorly and wanted to kill Joseph, Reuben wanted to kill Joseph. Uh, Judah said, no, let's sell him into slavery. And then, of course, when they are being accused secretly by Joseph in Israel or in Egypt during the seven years of famine, remember, Judah is the one that says, Look, this is going to destroy my dad if he finds out he can't take Benjamin back. He's worried. So I will stay in his place. Judah stepped up and was willing to sacrifice himself to go to jail instead of Benjamin. And so Judah was given kind of a reward a little bit. So Judah is where the chief ruler, meaning Christ and David and, you know, the kingship would come through um, for Judah. So he got that one, but he didn't get the birthright. Joseph got the birthright. Uh, so verse three, the sons I say of Reuben, and then this is going to go through the sons of Reuben. And we're going to go through them. You'll hear some names, uh, Tiglath, Pilnesir, king of Assyria, carried away them captive. Uh, basically, so remember that's talking about when they were taken. That was early on in Second Kings, about halfway through Second Kings, I should say. Around chapter 17 is when that happens. And so they're talking about, again, these genealogies coming through here. So if we come down... Um, and then there's a few stories in here, like verse 10, the days of Saul, that was, he was the king before David was the king that, uh, talking about a war that they had with some people and going through where they lived and some of the descendants and things were happening here. So verse 17, all these are reckoned by the genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel, the sons of Reubens, of Reuben and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh, valiant men able to bear buckler and sword and shoot bow with bow and skill for war, 40,703 score men. Remember, a lot of these guys are the ones that stayed on the other side of Jordan for their inheritance, but then they still fought with Israel as well, um, basically. So a little bit of some of the stories that are in here also. 
Um, but that's kind of, that's it. That's where we're at is going through that genealogy basically. Uh, so verse 20, let's see this last one here, verse 26, God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Rubenites, Gadites, half tribe of Manasseh. So that's kind of that first gathering, pulled them aside, and then there was a second time Assyria came through and took out all of Israel, basically later. So that's a little bit of those stories that happened in there. So that's, this is the genealogies of what happened with Reuben's family through that time. So let's jump into chapter six to continue to learn more.